You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. That's us. <laughs> is that us? Mm -hmm. All right. That sound can only mean one thing, and that is Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another after show on AfterBuzz TV. This is True Blood Season 6, Episode 9, Life Matters. I'm your host, JC, but I'm not alone tonight because I have a wonderful group of hosts as well, starting with the lovely lady <laughs> to my left, and I'm already hurting because... Why are you hurting? Because tonight's our last night with you. Yeah. And I'm freaking out. So sad. No. I'm just so intimidated by the finale that I like. I can't, I can't go out of my house that day. That's right. You can't like, leave. It's one of those things that I, I just have to stay in my room and just think and, and rock ponder. back and forth. And exactly. <laughs> I can't come on here and do that and be me in the microphone, just heavy breathing. Like, oh my god, oh my god, I have to wait a whole year. No, that, that's not pleasant. No one wants to hear that. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Sarah Stratton. <laughs> oh, yes. Hi guys. <laughs> And of course, joining Sarah is the lovely <laughs> no, your name, Scott Moore. And of course, you know what? I always call him Warlow, but today he's going to be our Jason, Stephen Lemieux. What's oh, up, Stephen? That's right. I'm doing pretty good. Is it the haircut? It's the handsome haircut. Oh, the haircut. Does it yeah. look like Warlow anymore? Is that what's going on? It's that haircut and sometimes that vacant look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we were going to go at it tonight, yeah. man. <laughs> don't mess with him. He's in charge That's right. of like, all yeah. of this. He will, yes. he will mute me at he any will. time, and I'm sure he will. So oh, that could be funny. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd need to be muted at times. So That's true. Guys, we had a lot go down tonight. A lot, always. Yes. They always have to build up the episode before the finale, right? That's right, the penultimate episode here. It all goes down. All right, so let's start with today I learned. What did we learn watching tonight's episode as you roll your eyes, Sarah Stratton? <laughs> I mean, this new, I feel like you have this new philosophical mm -hmm. thing you're trying to add to the true blood, but, um... Basically, it's learned? what we saw, overview. Yeah. I mean, I have a, I wrote down, I have a notepad, and I wrote down <laughs> giant, like, gruesome. I felt like the beginning of this episode had me so scared just because it was so gruesome. And I learned today that vampires can really take pleasure in how they kill people. It's something they have eternity to ponder about, and they... We'll use every facet of your body to achieve said goals. <laughs> you made me think of a question, actually, oh, goodness. to ask the chat roll. Because, uh, okay. Guys, if you're watching us live, chat roll, hello. Yeah, but you're, if you're not watching us live, Wing make up, sure to yes, go to you, <laughs> YouTube, iTunes, One Cast, Stitcher, and let us know what you think. And my question to you is, you brought up something great. Vampires have unique ways of disposing of their food, their victims. Well. Chat roll, let us know some of your favorite vampire kills throughout the six seasons of True Blood. Let us know. Are we talking in general like the ones that vampires have done or just overall gruesome deaths? Why not all of it? Okay. I'm just saying. No, the reason okay. being is because I think this episode was quite nostalgic. So I think mm -hmm. it'd be great for the chat roll and everyone involved to just take a look back. Because tonight we kudos to Brian Buckner who wrote the episode who is the showrunner, and I saw so much tonight. One of my favorite episodes I've seen in probably two years. I loved uh, tonight's episode. I thought it was fantastic. Scott, what'd you learn tonight? Well, I learned Grandma had some of the best lines of the episode. If we're <laughs> going to give out awards for best lines, because a lot of times I'm watching, I'm like, who has the best lines? And this best time, lines, best Grandma kills. definitely did. Okay. Grandma had it going on today at the funeral. I thought she had some really funny zingers there. I wonder if we're be able to see more of her. She's really made an appearance in the last couple of episodes. She so. has. Um, yeah, and uh, I just thought that that was really entertaining. What yeah. did you learn? That Brian Buckner's a badass. Ah, okay. I I now get it because, I mean, the fans have, have been liking this season, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but some people are still like, eh, it's still not the same, you can't go back, but I think 
what he was trying to do was rectify all the stuff that's happened the last few mm -hmm. seasons that I think True Blood kind of lost its way. Not in a bad way. When True Blood has been about Bon Toms. Mm -hmm. In the last two seasons, season and a half, they're never in Bon Tom. And I think he's bringing it back to basics, just like what all the actors have said, mm -hmm. that they're trying to bring it back to basics for season seven. And I think that's what he did masterfully tonight. Oh, yeah. And it was about the storytelling, not about... In the last few seasons, it's been about action, action, mm -hmm. action, 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 and not enough story. And this now, is very connected to character. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if the action comes from that place, it just seems so much more gratifying. And that's what I learned tonight. No, I agree. I think yeah. that how they... is interesting, because you would think, as we watch this episode, we're getting the flashes of the brutal killings going on, right? Versus a very solemn funeral. And, like, for me, I, I love the action of True Blood. So normally I find myself, like, compelled to want to stay in that scene. But today, like, because of the good storytelling, I found myself waiting to be taken back to the funeral, waiting to be taken back to the moments of Terry's past and to kind of, like, revisit that family-like feel that they do have mm -hmm. in their town. Mm -hmm. And so. it felt so real. That's what we were, we were commenting on when I was watching it. Just It felt real. Like, it just, it, it was, I don't know, just everything about it. Like, he, he was this real person here, and you're going back, and it, it was very intense for me, actually, watching it. Yeah, no, and and was there a lot of gore tonight? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the... the I mean, the first, yeah. what, 15 minutes mm -hmm. were definitely awesome. gore. Eric had over I've been waiting to say over Lark by the balls. Mm -hmm. That was in the show, Steven, mm -hmm. so don't mute yes. me. Okay. Literally. <laughs> Literally. That is not a figure of speech. No. Oh, yeah. Those things were ripped Whew. clear off. <laughs> All right, so. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Producing quite a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah, who knew? And quite a lot. Let's get into it. Let's, of course, talk with our that central character, the one the show is all really about. Suki. Suki. Mm -hmm. Suki. I feel like there hasn't been like a good sucker there hasn't in a while what and you thank Whatever you for right. the tease been. you gave me a, there's a tease because i'm going to talk about later if we have enough time and news and gossip about the true blood drinking game for the finale Ooh. Ooh. yes is there gonna be lots of sucker does that mean we get to have a <laughs> drinking game for the finale too if we play it next week <laughs> that's right you'll be rocking back and forth in your room <laughs> I don't think we'll make it to the show. That's how intense this game is. Okay. So, but first, we got to talk about this week. So, yeah. let's start with Suki and uh, Warlow. In Fairyland. In mm -hmm. Fairyland, we last left Warlow. I, you know, I guess drained by Eric, and of course Bill's mission to be Bill's pawn, mm -hmm. really. And did you notice the there's the similarity between Bill and Sarah Newland? Nothing will stop would stop their cause. Well, I mean, when religion and gods come involved, what but, can stop? That's right. <laughs> but he could care less. But then Warlow asked Sookie to zap Bill. And I, I, I go back to last season, that airy f elder fairy <laughs> told Sookie, do not give up your light. So every mm -hmm. time she's asked to use her light, it freaks me out. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I did freak me out tonight, too. I was like, okay, oh, one more, little more. Okay, but the thing was, more. we... We already got the hint it was going to work because she mm -hmm. even said, Suki said, like, my light's not going to work. And she not only blasted him with, like, a little bit of light, like, we've seen her have these sparks besides her, like, ball of craziness. Like, this was a full mm -hmm. stream of light power. And I'm wondering, like, is that because of her bond with Warlow that she's regaining strength? Or is it the land that they're in that enables her to have these I guess it almost felt like renewed powers. Mm -hmm. Like after, remember that night where she spent all of her time throwing her light into the air because she wanted to be rid of it? Right. Yeah. Like it took me back to that and I'm like wondering if she can ever gain that back. And we had, back then we hadn't known about Warlow's powers, about the powers of his blood, about any of that. So, and maybe the other fairies didn't either, the ones who told her that she had a limited supply. Mm -hmm. So I think that there could be more possibilities there. That, yeah, because I was wondering that because I felt like because it was so finite that when she used it, I was like, how much does she have left? You know, once she, I, I thought the same thing. I kind of freaked out. I was no. like, is it all gone now or is she get more back or how do you recharge? <laughs> recharge the hands. <laughs> she hasn't used the supernova yet. Mm -mm. No. I think that's no. it. If she uses the supernova, she's done. She's completely yeah. done. That, that I get. Like she's completely done. But what about when she just uses it yeah. like she did tonight? She had limited supplies of yes. the... 
Junior, Junior Nova, okay. Mm -hmm. And th it's so funny. I think this is a good question. Uh, our chat roll is talking about all their favorite kills. Russell Edgington with the newscaster. Oh, yeah. And just going on oh, and on. So, one. yeah, keep it coming, really guys. Brings back the, the memories. I still like the governor kill from this season. Yeah, that, the that was definitely the, the best. That was a great one. Best one of the season. I agree. Yeah, so now, but I, there was not a lot to talk about with Sookie and Warlow, really. No. Also, the fact that she still agreed to marry him or be his forever, despite the fact that he didn't help with the plan. Like, the whole agreement between mm -hmm. Sookie and Bill fell apart, thanks to Eric. Mm -hmm. But Sookie's still upholding her agreement with Warlow to be his. And she, like, mentioned that she keeps her promises yeah. to people. And to me, that was, like, kind of strange because I couldn't tell if she mm -hmm. was lying or being extremely truthful. And I was like, is she planning something? Is, yeah, does she and it was have odd. It? She almost felt, I almost felt like she was scheming. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was I don't odd. Know if I was trying to make that be there. Like, I was imposing, like, yeah. my thoughts, like, make a plan to get out of this. But I saw it differently, actually. Please. I, I, no. <laughs> the way she said it was, it seems to me she's a bit of a pleaser in her life and she made him a promise she said i made a pr she made a promise i mean mm -hmm. i did promise you that's not love that's obligation yeah so deep down inside it, she, i'm sure she wants to get out of it but still she's i promised but it feels odd though that she said that even though that the other thing didn't happen so it feels like then that promise would be null and void sort of that's why i didn't really understand it felt very odd to me of why she would have and I'll play devil's that. advocate to my own statement <laughs> <laughs> and say the only other thing is that when she spoke at Terry's funeral, one of the things she mentioned to Arlene was how lucky Arlene had been to have found someone that loved her from the moment she entered his life. Mm -hmm. And that was something that hardly anyone ever gets to say. But Sookie can say that as well with Warlow. The moment Sookie was born, Warlow is... All for Sookie all the time. Although most of the people that meet Sookie seem to jump right in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> who knows how yeah. great that is. So there's still a lot to play out there. So, in mm -hmm. of course, they didn't pay a lot of attention to them this week because no. next week is, it seems like, and we're going to save it, a lot of stuff's going to go down between those two. Of course it is. Oh, yeah. yeah so, Finale. Yep. This is all based on Sookie, guys. Come on. You know, exactly, and, it has to. And that's another nod. I, this episode was so... Such a throwback, oh, yeah. because everything was, it's, for the most part, everything was tied up this episode, mm -hmm. except for Sookie and Warlow. Kind of like, let's say, season one, when um, Marlene, uh, not Marlene, I'm sorry, Marianne, excuse Marianne. me. But Marianne, she made her Crazy appearance. Crazy bull and mm -hmm. claw lady. Right, but she made her appearance, uh, I think it was the 11th or 12th episode of season one, mm -hmm. and she wasn't the big baddie till next season. Mm -hmm. So they had they tied everything up and yep. then just they introduced the new baddie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and I felt that tonight. I felt like you know Vamp Camp. That's pretty much done. Pretty Terry's much. Pretty much. Although pretty I want much. someone to make it into a haunted house. You have six weeks to do it, people, and then invite us. Because when they were all going through and everyone was free and there's all the screams and all the craziness going on, I felt like I was like, I could have been like one of those Reversal crazy. Of the robots yeah, I felt like you could have been in some little crazy house, haunted I house. Totally it was really, really fun. So I want someone to make that and I want to be invited. Let's go. There Golden rule treat people the way you want to be treated. <laughs> yeah. Very well said. Yep. Speaking of which, let's move to the funeral. Uh. I know, sad, so, sad it's, day. A, it's yeah. a sad day, but it was a beautiful day. I was talking to Scott right before the show. I was like, as funerals go in this show, this was the most nicely mm -hmm. done funeral. I kept waiting for something bad to happen. Like when Big John got up, I was like, oh no, this isn't according to plan. This isn't according to plan. According but to it Grandma, went, it wasn't. I know. <laughs> she <laughs> was pleased. It went over so nicely, yeah. and I really loved the flashbacks. And most of the people who talked, I was, I told her I was a little iffy on Porsches just because I was like, where's the flashback of the screen or something? <laughs> um, but everyone else, like Lafayette and obviously Suki, I thought they did a really, really nice job. And Andy, Andy did a great job. Yeah. Every single, you, 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 there's been debates online about Todd Lowe's character, about Terry. And say, you know, he's people say he's such a central character, but other people say he didn't really have a true storyline until season five mm -hmm. with the free. Mm -hmm. But I think what we saw tonight added so much texture, so many colors, so much depth. Well, you need the yeah. people that are like glue, you know? You mm -hmm. need the people who keep everyone banded together as we've seen people mm -hmm. off on their own adventures with Suki with 
Bill and Eric and all these other tangents, you need the people like Lafayette, like Terry, that are kind of the glue that make like this web of Bon Tom. And I think we're going to see more of that. Like Sam's on those people, although he's had very big storylines. Mm-hmm. I think Alcide is kind mm. of going to become that. And I think that him coming into this funeral and kind of entering the community and really kind of play, like placing his feet in like even the sad parts of their lives is a big thing. Like, you called it last moment. week. I remember you said that mm-hmm. it, you, Sarah did say that that Alcide was coming back mm-hmm. and he was going to be Definitely. part of the community. So I mean, in the mm-hmm. way that um, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Um, Boathouse and Fortenberry, how they just were eyeing him up and down. Oh, I know that was great, and it was great I'm to sorry. have them back too. It was so like, funny. Yep, he's staying. Although he's gotten a little more gray this season. Did you notice that? Definitely I don't know. It's like it's, it's 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 more distinguished. Yes. He's maturing. Yes. He's going through his life's trials. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we, after the season, I mean, the last two seasons he's had, come on, he's right. kind of been put through the ringer from Russell to his dad and everything. Yeah, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people coming back, though. I mean, mm-hmm. as well as I'll see it coming back, also, like, Portia making bigger mm-hmm. appearances, Grandma making bigger mm-hmm. appearances, and even um, Tara's mom still married to the pastor. I mean, Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm so surprised by that. Although she seemed that. to be really liking Big John, That's right. too. So I was like, lady, the other yeah. one's your husband That's now. right. So Sarah's you, mom was looking good, too. So yeah. what's going to happen? Do you think Letty May is now back for season Letty seven? May. You know, because remember, her and Tara, they disowned each other mm-hmm. last season. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it seems like they're making, once again, Bon Tom's the center of the universe. Yeah. So, of course, you bring back Letty May. You now have um, the, the elder uh, Belfleur. Yeah. Is she going to be mm-hmm. part of the cat? You know, they're just going to fill the town mm-hmm. up now. And it's all the center of the universe is probably going to be Myrtle Lots again. Mm-hmm. So and Maybe Sookie will actually go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like that part where it was just kind of funny, and I know mm-hmm. they probably didn't do it on purpose when Sam was talking about how he never missed a day of work, and then they focused on Sookie. Oh, definitely did it on purpose. <laughs> Completely did it on purpose. Because it, it cracked me up. I'm like, yeah, Zuna and her, like, <laughs> when has she like, even been there last? Oh, my bad. Don't look at me. <laughs> Guys, I know we're talking about the funeral, but I'd be remiss if I did not mention this from the chat roll. Please, it's, please. It's from uh, Sookie and Warlow's story. Mm-hmm. This is from Benlo, of course. Thank you, Benlo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's see. I think Warlow wants to steal her light so as to as to lose his darkness, hence making Sookie completely vamp and him completely fey. <gasps> Claudine in the third season mm. said darkness is coming. He wants to s- steal your light. She also said it wasn't the water that killed your parents, Sookie. Back then, we thought it was Bill. She was talking about not Warlow, but now it may be a possibility. That is a great mm-hmm. insight, and I think would be such a huge twist. But, I mean, True Blood loves to do that, to kind of foreshadow these things. And, like, as he brought up that instance from season, I think he said three, like, I could totally see the writers of True Blood going back to that and being like, ha-ha, yeah. we told you this, and you just didn't listen to us. Well, see, but, I had read, you know, about Brian, B- Brian Buckner was supposed to be actually the, the showrunner after season one. But Alan mm. Ball loved working on True Blood so much that he stayed on. Mm-hmm. So I know that Buckner, has, he just has this deep passion for the show. And I, I just saw so much tonight oh, with, yeah. with, his, with his pen tonight. It was beautiful. And even the, even the direction of um, Romeo, is, I believe it's Tyrone. And this guy, he's a former DP on the show, and now he, he was directing the episode. Mm-hmm. And even he threw in his name into the yeah. script tonight, which is great. great. So all these little nuggets that... Mm-hmm. I remember from those first two seasons, and now, you know, the last few seasons have been so frenzied that it's... Yeah. I mean, the funeral... You, we could have just done a whole episode on just the funeral. Yeah, I agree. And I, and it's, it is such a great feeling that it's finally kind of going back, because that's what I loved about the show, and I think that's why I hated last season so much, is that it felt like it got so far removed from anything that the show originally had, and all those new characters, and this season has been so nice to... Ooh, so like bring it home. Strong words there. It's bring it home. I really did. I really there. just did not like last season at all. I really did not. Then that's great that you said because of that very reason. It just felt like it had gotten too far from its roots. You've said that. You said that also, yeah. and I was like, "What's he talking about?" But now, I mean, given what I've, you're completely right on that. You know, it just going back, mm-hmm. going back to the stories. I think though it is important to add the variety to the show because if you sure. did just focus solely on Bon Tom for mm-hmm. six seasons, then we would be bored of Bon Tom. Like sure. we need you need the variety to make us remember that we also love this aspect of the mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, if we stayed in Bon Tom for another 
three seasons out adding any of the outside world, people will get bored of that mm-hmm. too. Like you need the variety, you need the, and you need kind of these like different components, or else the heights aren't as high. Sure, sure. So I understand why yes. you disliked it, but I I I know you the liked show. it. I know I know you liked last I season. Liked I just season. felt like it's just there were so many characters and so many things that just felt like it got so far removed from its original. So I, I get it. Like, you're right. You would have been bored if you were just sitting there in Bon Tom the whole time and the same characters. But at the same time, I felt like there's a balance between way too many characters and, you know, too many storylines going on, and it gets to be too much. Sure. Well, well, since you are such a student of the of the older version of the show, Scott, I mean, what stood out for you in the, fun, you know, in the funeral, those those nods to the past what was your did you pick did you did you get any foreshadowing did you see anything like that from the funeral well, i know we just we literally just yeah, finished watching know, it 10 like, to <laughs> exactly 22 minutes ago so it's a lot <laughs> I know, to, like hey, hey, put me on the spot now um what i really like what i really appreciated was the fact that all these old characters were back like letty may and and you know uh Mama Fortenberry, I can't think of her first name right now, but like having those old characters back was really cool. So that's why I think the sort of the foreshadowing of what you're saying will bring it back to its roots. It's obviously, now we're going to be focused back on the, the town's characters again that they're bringing it back. I think it was, I'm not sure, I'm trying to think, Maxine? Yes. Okay. Max- Maxine Fortenberry. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Max- yes. There we go. I was, yes. Wait, and I was like, something with an M. That's why I was like, Mama, I'm like, <laughs> Matt Mavis. <laughs> like, what about Lala and the fact that Lala. Ugh. Looks like such a gangster. Uh, oh my goodness! Love him. It was old school Lala from the first yes. season. Just because I'm not, he hasn't changed, but no. he gets such little screen time. He always gets, he gets like two scene, two lines of scene. Mm-hmm. He gets like a quip and he's out. And he's like a scene stealer. He is. He gets some of the best lines of every, every episode. But you're right. There's not enough. But tonight he substance. had a monologue. He had, mm-hmm. a, he had a speech. He, he spoke about what it was like being with Terry and. We also got the hint that he had powers way back then. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was already there. Yep. And the fact that he, you know, when you went to each flashback, how great was it with Todd Lowe's character that he went back to the old Terry from season one? Because remember season one, he was a little, he was scary. Not yeah. scary, but he was just, ah, oh, it was throughout the progression of the seasons yeah. that he kind of evolved. and, and Well, what, yeah, he had, you know, post-traumatic stress there, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it was, it was great to actually see him go back to that. I Those thought it was interesting times. watching all of the actors kind of go back mm-hmm. and revisit where their characters were. Yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, we, it was definitely old, happy Lafayette, you know, his adding mm-hmm. his swagger to his French fry dipping or whatnot. <laughs> yeah, that was great. But also, if you watched Arlene and Sookie when mm-hmm. they were at the counter ordering, I felt like Sookie was back to like, I'm innocent. I'm mm-hmm. going to flip my hair back and forth like <laughs> 80 times. She didn't have like the weight that's put on her now. Mm-hmm. Um, how did they go back? Sarah, you're an actress, and how did how did they channel going back to? I mean, you're right because those little little details of the evolution yeah. of the character because it's been back. years. Oh my goodness! Like as an, I mean, I don't know how these actors did it or whatnot, but it's so how hard. Would you? I mean, I think the hardest thing is that when you've lived with a character for so long, like these actors mm-hmm. have, like they have been living the lives of these characters for years yeah. and you almost have to to get yourself back i feel like you almost have to in a way like block out all the things you've learned yeah as i say all the things you've learned you and all the things to, you've experienced like that's then. how your character grows and mm-hmm. when they do like episode to episode it's like they have to it's kind of like you grow as a person like yeah. you have to remember all the events you have but to go back like you have to block that away and i guess what i would do is just mainly focus on the things that drove them in that moment and like when Suki was young just it was to be a good waitress and to be a part of on top and mm-hmm. to have her friends and to welcome the new guy and to not seem like a telepath to everyone which now obviously is completely reversed because she's telling everyone she's a telepath or mm-hmm. that's what she, you know she's identifying yeah the confidence as. too of her just admitting mm-hmm. that i thought was kind of interesting huge, huge moment she said especially that. for bon tom like mm-hmm. for everyone in bon tom to kind of know what they're dealing with like obviously they don't know the full truth because her saying i'm a fairy would probably put her in that house but like saying she's a telepath such a departure mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. great that we saw both aspects of her in this episode and you could really see the difference of what is on her mind and who she's become but i guess to answer your question block out your thoughts and more of (laughs) think of what drove you in the time of the period and like for terry that was obviously just images of war constantly Mm -hmm. and trying to you know he put 
value on life and rethinking his position in the world. This is just correct me if I'm wrong. I kind of I know everyone had had a part to play in Terry's evolution, mm -hmm. but I think Andy in a way was the catalyst. Andy, mm -hmm. Andy Arlene. It, and well, Arlene. and yeah. of course Arlene, but uh, but I mean at the very it, beginning going back. Yeah. Yes, Andy was the one who wanted to get him out of that space, mm -hmm. get him a job. What is it? Um, what is it? A raging bitch IPA. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> Love the beer. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you guys, when True Blood first came out, like they started making True Bloods, uh -huh. and like my friends and I, we would like drink them. <laughs> Why not? I mean, we'd have like a True Blood like finale, like get togethers or whatnot. But now I'm like, oh, great. Now we have a beer to go. Yeah, with. right. That's what I'm saying yes. too. I'm like, I want the Where beer. Where is this manufactured? That's right. Because I want some. You better. I do too. You better play the True Blood game with some raging bitch IPA next mm -hmm. week then. Okay. That's okay. actually Fine. a very good beer. They have it in most bars in LA. Oh, ah. It exists. It does exist. I okay. think it's by Flying Dog. Oh, okay. Interesting. I was totally convinced that it was made up. I did too. I thought it was, I was made like, up. The name is just too fitting. <laughs> yeah, because now they're gonna do a whole other product line for them. Writing it can't just exist. Okay, that makes it even better. It does. See? Now we're definitely going to have it next week. I'm like the biggest Brian Buckner fanboy. That's what I'm saying. See, because Brian wrote the episode. <laughs> Cause we, yeah, we totally oppose you on that or something. Not you. I'm no. just, but just like you like Brian so much, when you marry him. There we go, <laughs> Brian. That was a proposal. Come on in anytime. No, I, um, I didn't say that. <laughs> back to the funeral. Yes, thank you. Bring it back. I mean, oh, am I supposed back. to? Say yeah, well, I, I, I thought you were going to finish it yeah. off since. I was you so it focused back. on the beer. I mean, we can transfer from Lafayette to Arlene, but I don't know if we want to jump to that boat yet. Yeah, no, uh, why not? I'm, I'm trying to think anyone else that we missed talking about Andy. I mean, the, the fact that Sookie covered for Arlene, which was... And then yeah. Arlene accepted it and wasn't like, get out of my mm -hmm. head. Like, their friendship is definitely rebuilding, mm -hmm. and that's... Um, we were wanting that, so I'm glad. I yeah. think they, Hopefully, like, Arlene is going to need a rock. And I don't think Suki can really be that completely because no. she has way too much on her plate all the time. Right, right. But so I'm wondering where she's going to find that. And in the past, we've thought, well, I know that on the show, we've predicted, well, maybe she's going to kind of lose it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like maybe she'll become dependent on alcohol. Maybe all these things could happen. But in this, she seemed really strong. Yeah. Like Arlene really seemed to be not happy, but not angry anymore yeah and like in a, in a good place for that exactly what was going on um, and yeah, she said it herself i believe she said that she was satisfied i, I don't remember the exact word she said arlene at the end mm -hmm. that oh, she her was, thoughts yeah, yeah her mm -hmm. thoughts sorry mm -hmm. yeah so she was at peace mm -hmm. which okay. is so good and so but it's like how long is that peace good? like yeah. it's so bad that i'm expecting the worst out of the situation like because i, and I think we all are i mean i we're, i'm right there with you I'm like, how is she gonna be okay? Mm -hmm. She can't be okay. Um, but I want to. I'm. I'm excited about Suki and Arlene being back together, you know, in friendship or something. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone else, like, I loved the whole town. And I, oh my gosh, Big John's voice, <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Got a very important note here from Lions fan. Could you imagine if they had the writer of this episode in the studio right now? JC would faint, and Sarah would have to host it. <laughs> <laughs> this would probably happen. Where would I be in Except, all this? Scott would be laughing. Yeah, apparently. You, no, but definitely, you know, the scene with Arlene and just the beauty between the two of them, it, I teared up. I Aww, did. I did. you have your moment? I had my moment. I had my moment with... Um, the whole marine presentation. Yeah. Those always get me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I felt like so the real. The playing of the bugle. I'm that's gonna so out. real. Always gets me. Uh, you're looking at me like I didn't like it. No, 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 no. I I really liked it. I liked that. It has a sense of formality mm -hmm. and you know things being final, but honorable. And I really liked that. And I felt that the whole culmination and the flag presenting to Arlene. It signifies something, and in my mind, it as much as Terry had something and downed, like he was such a good person, mm -hmm. he does he deserved to have a good funeral. He does he like deserved this whole presentation um, from what a great guy he's been through all the seasons, and really, although he had his whole past at war, he never did anything against anyone that I can remember. 
he he was always looking out, and like they obviously mentioned it, it was always family mm-hmm. to him. But I think he treated everyone in the town as family. It wasn't just like Arlene and Mikey and her kids. He treated everyone he came into contact with as family. So obviously it's going to be the most important to him. One of the best send-offs for a character that I could yeah. remember without being the lead right. of the show. Right, that's exactly, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it was really, really great send-off. And in all really of great. this that we've talked about, Suki and Warlow and Terry's funeral, we haven't even touched upon probably the best part of the whole episode, Vamp Camp. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. The escape, the... The destruction of Van Camp and Eric on the warpath and Bill there as well. Just a, being a renegade or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, come on. Starting off, we Badass already... renegade guy. <laughs> kind of like old in Eric. A jumpsuit. Yeah. In like a gas station jumpsuit or something. Come on, it's yeah. old Eric. Uh, we keep yeah. saying that old Eric, badass Eric is back. Definitely back. And we, we were talking about, you know, we already mentioned about overlarks. Stuff, parts mm-hmm. parts being ripped yeah his balls being ripped off of course yes that could happen <laughs> old, i didn't like mm-hmm. it no i, I mm-hmm. did kind of like it but i didn't like it i definitely did not like it <laughs> okay <laughs> it was, uh, yeah no man likes no. that sarah no one likes that uh. i'm sorry <laughs> all right so what did we get out of band, band camp vamp <laughs> camp the destruction of let's sarah sarah still escaping Oh, why goodness. is she getting crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier? Okay. Is she okay. coming back? She did. of course she's coming yes. back. We we lost her two seasons ago. She comes back. Yes. Like she just never leaves. Of course she's definitely coming back. I was really happy with the fact that Jason didn't kill her, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I was unhappy with the fact that she lived. Like I wanted some other vampire to come out and kill her. I never wanted the whole her and Jason thing almost to happen. Mm-hmm. Although I do like because I like Jason and. I do like that he didn't kill her. I felt I feel like if he had killed her, it would have been a really dark turn for Jason. Mm-hmm. He's had enough of those. And yeah. this was more of a, you know, bringing it back. Happy, yeah. good guy. Maybe not all there mentally sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, just straightforward and, like, happy-go-lucky. And I feel like if he had killed her, it would have been a turn for the worse for him. Yeah, and it would have been the easy, kind of lazy writing decision to do that, too, just why he was there to be able to have that happen with the gun mm-hmm. and everything. So, um, yeah, so I'm glad it didn't happen that way either. And Are if, you glad she's alive? Well, I, I, you know, I have to say, just watching the character evolve and just kind of go, just get crazier and crazier, kind of am because I just want to see, see I want to see happen. where her craziness is going to take her next, oh you know? God. So, Can because she, she really just, get any crazier? She, I mean, just at the end there when she's going up to the top of the tower. <laughs> oh my God. The of death. <laughs> like, Come on, you are just. You're just getting so insane over the top. I was cracking up. I, we both were. Was, I know it was great. So I just uh, f- like the fact that she lived because now who knows where her craziness will take her next. Oh. And I know, Scott, you of all people, you are the line master. You find these line, the best lines of the show, mm-hmm. and I'm going to save that line from Newland for, <laughs> for a moment because we do have to backtrack a little bit and, oh, talk, yeah, yeah. and talk about Eric and the shrink. Mm-hmm. And you can see the only thing that Eric once again stands for is his family. And the fact that the yeah. sh- the shrink said the stupidest thing on the planet <laughs> when he said I was it uh, did he actually say I fucked yeah yes your project he did, mm-hmm. he did. Which of course I kn- we knew he was gonna say it he's up he's about to die I mean mm-hmm. I guess you try and grasp at any bit of vengeance you can but and I think that he thought he was stabbing Eric right hurt and it did but then Eric thought hold on I have better torture for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, that's all Eric is about, his family. He could care less about anything, but his project, you do not mess with them. I'm sorry. Okay, yes, his progeny is, but my question is, what's Eric's plan or feelings towards Suki right now? I feel like the last interactions he had with her before he had all the trouble with Nora, before he was taken away as a prisoner, like, before all that, the last time I f- remember or really feel like we spent any Suki eric time, they were, like, in love, and then she broke it off with him mm-hmm. and Bill. But we haven't really seen him have any emotion towards her since then, mm-hmm. and I find that to be uncharacteristic of him. Because with everyone else we've seen, once he gets close, he will do anything for you. And I feel like the only moment we've had him even talking about Sookie this season is when he was talking to Bill, being like, you're still controlled by Sookie. 
I've seen no relationship with him, like, try to continue with Sookie since their breakup, and that bothers me. I don't like that. Do you think maybe they'll, do you think they'll address that? Because the last time they had that true interaction was when Nora was outside of Sookie's mm -hmm. house, and she rescinded her invitation to Eric. Mm -hmm. And it was heartbreaking and whatnot, but since then, he's just done a 180. Like, he shut off, yeah. but, but guys do that. I yeah, mean, that's what I was thinking. I think it was he kind of just shut off, but I still think he has those feelings there, and he's trying to, to block it. I don't it. like it. Trying, yeah. You don't like it? I okay. get it. I get it. I don't it. like it. All right, all right. So anything else that we're trying to uh, trying to pick up here, the fact that, Scott, I'm going to give you, you got the line. You know the line, <laughs> right as Sarah is opening the roof. <laughs> That was so great. And Steve, it's, I, Newland's, Newland got his comeuppance, finally. We yeah. said he, he was a weasel. Yeah. And finally, Eric but called I was, him. I was still sad to see him go, though. Again? Oh, I was not. I was a little go. bit. I mean, he's really? whiny, but he was, you know, kind of just silly, you know, kind of that comedic little weasley guy. I mean, I was, in, it was like Eric versus Bill, as it was for the entire episode, and like Bill gave the last command of. You know, leave him, let him drink for me or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And Eric's still like, no, I'm still going to defy you. No, <laughs> he deserves to die. And I was like, Eric's right. <laughs> let him die. Yeah. I'm done with. He opens his mouth and everyone else dies. So he can mm -hmm. die. That's fine. Yeah. And, sorry. An idiot. and of course, the line. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love you. Jason. Jason Stackhouse. No, it was great because, you know, the oh. roof had opened up and Sarah's looking down thinking, like, oh, my God, he still loves me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was so great. Because even I still sat there and thought, what? If he Is had said Sarah? That, yeah, exactly. What's going on? I was like, what about Russell? What about their internal <laughs> right? love that happened? Wasn't like, there another love affair there? So that was a great no. line with that nice little pause. Jason just really enthralls people. Him mm -hmm. and Sookie have, like, love potion they powers. They do. Well, it's they the do. fairy blood. It's the... It's but, a touch but of fairy. Jason doesn't yeah. really got that much. I don't. I know. I thought he was more of a. Yeah, I thought non, he was pretty human. It skipped him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but in that scene alone, did you guys notice you have Sarah opening up uh -huh. the light, Newland boiling, mm -hmm. Jason freaking, Ginger screaming, Jason freaking yeah. out. There's so many things going on in the span of five seconds. Mm -hmm. I was just like, amazing. You, you, yes. You mash this all in, and and in the middle you have like. Sacrificial Bill being like, "Drink my blood." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my goodness!" If this isn't a reference to, you yeah. know, Holy Communion, yep. who what is? No, were Sorry. we surprised <laughs> that Bill that survived? Uh -huh. Were we surprised Bill survived? Yes. Really? No. I'm. We're torn it here. It, this really depends, actually. I'll be surprised how this, how he's affected now or not affected. By Lilith, mm -hmm. because I think it would be great. Because I didn't know his like they lingered on the door frame after Jessica and James went in to save mm -hmm. him. Yeah. After like the three naked black blooded <laughs> women came, <laughs> I mean, I think that it would be really interesting if they did banish kind of Lilith from him. But then where is Lilith, <laughs> or like mm -hmm. where is Lilith's blood like really residing? So. It left a lot of doors open. I think we need way more answers, but I was surprised at how quickly he came back into the light or came mm -hmm. back out full strength, seeming. But he's not Bill. How did that happen? He was a puddle of blood. Sookie all sees it, and that is not Bill. Mm -hmm. And now he's all of a sudden he's Bill again? What is he? I don't know. Who is he? Yeah, that's why I think we got to find it. But that's, I was kind of taking what you, I, I knew he was going to survive because I knew there was no way that they were going to do that unless they were going to really just leave us hanging there until mm -hmm. next season but I was surprised like you said that he came back so quickly but was his power diminished or is he back to who he exactly. was like, who I guess that's still what I'm trying like, to where, yeah where is this mind boggling mind? I'm trying to figure that out too in my head like what he is now yeah like is all uh, Chatwell's even asking the same I'm wondering if all of his Lilith blood is mm -hmm. out of him and what's yeah or is it I really don't know and like how is that going to affect Warlow and how is their relationship going to change? Like, if, if let's just perhaps that Lilith has left Bill. Like, there's no way Lilith is gone. Like, there's just no way. Like, that, whether she's evil or godlike or whatnot, I don't think that's gone from the season or from no. the show. So it has to either find another mm -hmm. person to kind of control or... It, I think it's going to be like hiding in Bill, it, it, but it can't be gone. Okay. It just can't. 
Well said. Yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I have no answer to that either. So. I guess that was the point, right? Mm-hmm. Liu Kang yeah. has been <laughs> gloriously walked, chest hair yes, open. chest hair exposed to everyone. Into the gleeful <laughs> into merriment the, of the, the hills sun. are alive. That was hilarious, too. My God, were they like punch drunk, high on... They get high off fairy butter. Yeah, so. uh, in the sunlight. It was really funny. And why was... Okay, why was Willa acting like the bee's knees that she's out in the sun? She's been a vampire three days. Yeah, right. Like, oh, <laughs> the sun! Oh, yay! Come on! <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. I agree with you on that. I do agree. <laughs> also, there were some random faces but there. They were all in vamp camp, so maybe, you know, for them it was, you're still inside all the time. But here's a big question. I wonder if we have the same question. Please continue. When they flash to Honolulu. Yeah. And they're destroying, oh, no, they're not destroying, they're taking those uh-huh. those cases of true blood. They're not aware that there is um, Hep B in there. So or are they? Or are they? Because that's what I was trying to, I, I actually wrote down here, Honolulu, question mark, question mark. I was like, was there something that... Somebody had said, I felt like there was something said earlier in the season about Honolulu, and and I'm trying to remember what that was, and I was racking my brain, and I don't know if you guys remembered, because that, I felt like there was something there. I don't either. I, I feel like it might, remember. it's definitely, I feel like it's connected to the True Blood mm-hmm. Network, but um, I was, I I feel like this True Blood with Heavy can now be used also as a weapon. Mm-hmm. So are they taking it, and the vampires are the ones who took it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. why do vampires need, like, is it for study? And is in Honolulu, killing <laughs> other like, people. It's what's that it's all about? Whole new drama. Mm-hmm. We need, need bad guys, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. And we'll get to that in a few minutes because there's a lot of show left because we got some more stuff to talk about, including coming up. Our we got our game. Game. News game. is good. I like games. News gossip mm-hmm. and a little spoiler rich. If you don't Articles. want any spoilers, like you should probably stop listening pretty soon. Spoilers just... coming. Yeah, beware. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah. Thank you, Steven. So, any final thoughts before we move on to the game? I mean, let's see. Is there okay. anything? Let's see. I feel like we've covered pretty much everyone. Jason, yeah. you know, who knows it? Him and what's her name? Oh goodness, Violet. 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 Yeah. I thought she was going to take a switch to Bill for a split second there when mm-hmm. she was caressing his hand. And I was like, <laughs> hey, I thought you were all about sacred bonding here. Mm-hmm. But she's Vamps back, are very she's handsy. And mm-hmm. of course, Eric flying off into the distance. No. Yep. Because his mission isn't done yet. I mean, remember, there's no Fantasia. Well, what's going to happen to Fantasia? Do they get it back? All these questions. Oh, yeah. What's going to happen to soon. Eric? I don't care about Fantasia. I care about <laughs> Eric. Well, I got something here in a few minutes. Just hold on for one more second. Before we go to it, though, we've got to play a little bit of a game. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, our True Blood trivia. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like, what's like a game theme <laughs> song? We had one last week, and no one caught it. It was a tip to the old war games, from the old Matthew Broderick film. I but don't remember no, there being any music. I don't yeah. remember there being any music either. We had what? one. We okay, did. please, please. Okay. I was out of it. This is only a half hour show. We got to move on. All right. So, <laughs> last week's qu- we didn't get to ask a question last week. So, this is our final question. Of course, next week we'll make the announcement who's going to take home the True Blood poster with the signatures from our guests that we've had this season. But first, our final question. Uh, okay, we all know Tara Thornton as the off line sassy vampire, but also Pam lover. But before she was slinging drinks at Merlot, she worked somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Where? Make sure to go to AfterBuzzTV.com, YouTube, iTunes. Let me know. Let us know your answer mm-hmm. to qualify for the poster that we're giving away next week. So act now. There you go, Forever guys. Hold your peace. Very well played. What is Djibouti? Okay. Now, is it time for... News and gossip. Afterbuzz TV News. <laughs> Holy wow. moly, that was loud, Steven. That one plays every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our first news here we got. Let's see, carry the one dot the lowercase gay. Dot the lowercase J. As <laughs> they're okay. laughing at that. Should we do news and gossip or spoilers? I mean, mm. I. Whatever you'd like. You're the one with the master computer yeah. over there. Well, okay, so then let's see. I would say let's do news and gossip because I feel like I'm going to have too much to think about the spoilers. Okay. I want to hear the spoilers. Though. Okay. Uh-oh, Patience my, is a virtue. My internet is <laughs> actually... Very limited group. My, 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 uh-oh, we, you know what? Technical difficulties. My internet's not pulling wow. it up. Wow. Okay, then I guess we have to skip to spoilers. Okay, there were two great little, little articles. One was from Anna Camp that she gave to Entertainment Tonight. Spoiler alert. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's I really one. like the Star Wars I like in the, the spoiler background. Awesome music here. All right, so she was asked, "What about the highly anticipated season six finale?" Camp gave Truby some juicy information. She said, "Fans can expect to see the vampires changing the way they live in the world. You, hmm. You've seen a little bit in." A little bit of that with Bill walking in daylight. I think True Blood has a certain set of rules of how the characters live in the world, but that's about to change. It expands the show in a way that will excite and inter- interest fans. It's also kind of shocking. So basically, mm. what we saw today, they're going to be they're going to be daywalkers. Are they all going to be high all the time? Mm. They're going to f- somehow synthesize. synthesize mm. I can never say but that. But are they all going to be high? Like. I don't I'm know. I'm sorry, Do- but it's going to get so annoying if they're all walking on the daylight, always thinking yeah, the hills are alive. I agree. I'm going to be like, okay, be regular people, please. Yeah, the first time is fine because they're all exactly. joyful about Actually, being the sun, but afterwards it will get old. Better than the chat rule, we have our very own engineer. He says they will ride in unicorns. They'll <laughs> ride on unicorns. You know, that is... Well, unicorns haven't been introduced into the series yet. That's one of the only things that haven't been yet, so maybe it's about time. Unicorns and dragons, come on. Yeah. And let me see, and I'm trying to find our last one, our True Blood drinking game. Ah, rats. This is the one I'm more curious Mm. about. Okay, give me one second for... Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's give us one second, but... Does it involve Raging Bitch? It will. Beer? IPA something? It definitely it, will. That or True Blood, actually. True. Let's see. Here we but go. True Blood is an alcoholic, is it? Well, it's not. I have, it's <laughs> I have one more spoiler. I have one more spoiler. Okay, oh. one more. This is from Brian Buckner himself. Okay, without it's spoiling love. the mm-hmm. August 11th episode, which wouldn't have aired until this issue comes out, this is from EW. Here are five things the True Blood showrunner Brian Buckner can safely tease about season six final hour. Number one, there will be more blood. Kind of of course. course. Okay. I could predict that. <laughs> right. Okay, the more blood. <laughs> sure. Someone will kiss someone. Yes. <laughs> Prediction's done. The first half of the episode is going to deal with Sookie and a less patient Warlow. Telling we you, saw he's, that by, like, wedding rage. He's mm-hmm. bad. He's, and then there's going to be, okay, huge spoiler here. So, guys, if you don't want to hear this, spoiler alert. go away right now. Okay. Spoiler alert. There is a significant ju- time jump in the second half of the episode, which will help move the action to Bomb Toms for the next season. So I think, what does that mean? Like, first yeah. half we're going to get Sicky Warlow m- almost married. Second half we're going to get future Bomb Yeah, Tom. that's what I'm saying. What's significant No, but it's a time, time jump. jump. So they're going to oh, yeah. come back to uh, Bomb Toms, and things are going to probably have changed. Sam and Nicole's baby will have been, will be five or six years <laughs> old. Oh, oh that's right. Okay, so, so you're talking, you're going y- several years potentially, not oh, just like six months down the road or something. Well, think okay. about it. Sookie in season four was in Fairyland for one day, and a year elapsed on our time. So if he's alluding to that, could that mm-hmm. mean there's going to be a huge jump? Arlene's going to be rich. Wait, is he saying that it's a Sookie Warlow time jump separate? Or is he saying that the entire cast, including Sookie and Warlow, we're just going to miss a part of their lives and the audience mm. is going to have the time jump? That is for you and the audience at home to ponder this week. Like, so I'm leaving you with this, mm. but I'm actually going to leave one last thing. There is, let's see, there is definitely, let's see, Ed Eric has one sexy and provocative scene. Yes, he always does, but they were he was asked to elaborate. There's definitely something for the ladies and the gay men, Bruckner says. We might see a certain body part. Um, yeah. Also, Ooh. hint in this episode, <laughs> let's, um, Jason just fed on Eric. Yeah. I'm sorry? That was, that was Jason hot. Jason just fed on Eric. Yep, so the Sweet dreams. Yeah, that was. That was great when he said that to you. Have some nice dreams of me. I'm like, mm-hmm. so that leaves a lot. So with that said, it's now time for predictions. We gotta get out of here, guys. So yeah. okay. Sarah, mm. Sarah yeah. Bear, it's her last <laughs> You're not gonna be with us next week. I will not be here next week. You can just say whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Yes. So, so no repercussions for you. Final predictions. Um, Eric isn't coming back. He's only coming back in his in the blah 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 blah, blah dreams. That's how he's going to make his appearance in the finale. When he's eventually going to come back, I don't think he's going to come back for quite a few episodes. Mm. I'm talking about into next season. I think Eric is gone for a while. Um, what Pam's going to do, I think we're going to see more of the Tara Pam relationship. We got a little bit of, you know, a little moment from them in the street. So I think that we're going to revisit that. And I think that Alcide is going to make 
an interesting impact on the town of Bon Temps. Um, maybe not next episode, but definitely soon. All right, Scott, yeah. what do you got? Definitely agree with you there. He's he's going to make a, his mark in the next season for sure, because I think that was all planned around. Um, and yeah, that's a good point. Maybe about Eric just being in Jason's dreams with the whole seeing the Eric body part. That could even be about all about the dream there. Um, obviously, we haven't seen the last of Anna Camp uh, of Sarah. We're definitely going to see her and how that plays out. I think it probably won't be until next season, but I'm very excited that she's still around to see her craziness. And I still do fear for Jason because I felt like it was almost foreshadowing because he wasn't at the funeral with the whole rest of the town. Oh, and yeah. I keep thinking, you know, that something was going to, and I, even the tonight's episode, I thought, was something going to happen with Violet or, or somebody was going to do something to him or is Anna Camp's character going to come back and do something to him? So I do fear for Jason. All right. So with that said. And there's going to be a wedding. Yeah. Time. <laughs> it will be a wedding. Wedding bells will be a ringing. I want a big wedding. I don't want this little flower wreath wedding. And you will have that, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> but first, Sarah, what it's other pretty. shows? Where can we find you at After Buzz? What other shows are you up to? Um, Teen Wolf, and then I, and I'll be starting some more shows soon. All right, and Scott, where can we find you? Uh, on Twitter, sman80. That's s m a n eight zero, and on the wonderful Orange is the New Black after show here on Sundays. Ooh, I heard Ooh, that's I good. Heard that show's it's great. Very you guys, good. You guys are like number one. I'm telling you, you guys are awesome. Steven, thank you so much for putting up with us. Where can they find you, buddy? On the back of your milk carton. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not. I don't know where to go with that one, but I'm going to say yes and. All right. You can find me at JC Rubio TV on Instagram and Twitter. So for the lovely Sarah, the lovely Scott. Steven, I'm JC. We're the Afterbuzz for True Blood. We'll see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterbuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of Afterbuzz TV. Sarah! <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.